start recording. Okay, so in order to uh, simulate uh, a clustered environment uh, or network environment, uh, we can of course use the actual network uh, in in uh, within uh, our scope. But uh, right now, what we will gonna do is we will not use any cluster or anything related to uh, networking. But we will uh, demonstrate everything in in a local machine. So in order to work with the local machine. Uh, what, what what we need to have is we need to have uh, some virtualization software. So you, probably you guys have heard uh, terms like virtual machine, um, virtual boxes, VMware, that kind of thing. So um, what those uh, software is going to provide is with us uh, running multiple computers within the same machine. But uh, with today, um, uh, today, uh, topics to align with today topics uh, like such as things running on microservices, service oriented architecture, and all those things. So we we should um, uh, in microservice architecture we we we'll, we have the uh, capability of running uh, several services. So uh, to enable those kind of uh, practices, to enable such such thing, we use uh, uh, containerized software solutions. It's something similar to virtualization but a little bit different uh, in little uh, on some terms okay uh, so it's gonna give uh, us not uh, uh, it's not gonna give us a complete uh, isolated host like VM does but it's gonna share some uh, kind of components with the uh, base operating system and we will have uh, some um, functionalities over it. So my recommendation would be, uh, so, so you, you guys get a clear a clear idea, uh, have a look around what is virtualization and what is containerization. So uh, take a note and uh, uh, find uh, the similarities, differences between uh, the two, two technologies. So you will get an uh, idea what's, what's, uh, what is what. So um, uh, take a note on that. So um, today I will <clears throat> teach you guys something, uh, um, some things about uh, the containerization. So in uh, in here, I'll be using a software called Docker. Okay, uh, Docker is uh, originated in uh, in um, Linux machines or Linux operating systems. But right now, what you can do is you can uh, simulate or you can have that same environment uh, uh, within windows and max using a software called the code desktop okay so if you are if you are planning to uh, work with docker in windows or Mac, macintosh uh, make sure you install docker desktop if you are linux you can just install docker daemon in your machine and it would work just fine so um let's uh um, dive into uh, basic uh, um, Docker and Docker commands. Um, uh, so you guys have an idea uh, what's going on and how it's gonna be working. Um, so uh, my intention, um, my expectation is that uh, you guys have installed Docker uh, within your machine. Uh, if you have not, uh, probably you will have to install it within your local machine, then um, you'll be able to execute these commands as I proceed. So right now what you're seeing is um, uh, my uh, terminal. So within this terminal, I will, uh, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that uh, Docker is installed within my machine. So I can check that uh, Docker minus V uh, should be Docker. See, yeah. So, uh, since I am, uh, I'm on Mac. Uh, I'm running Docker Desktop on background, and I have uh, with the Docker V command, I can see the Docker version that I am running. Okay. So this is like the basic uh, test that I will, uh, I would have to run to make sure my um, machine is running Docker. So, um, um. Uh, 
in terms of uh, running docker so if you guys uh, if you guys have used uh, virtualization software so like um, uh, virtualization software like uh, vmware or virtualbox or something similar you guys probably know that uh, the um, application uh, when you are when when you want to run a uh, 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 guest operating system we call the guest operating system whatever we are running inside the vm and we have uh, something called the host operating system, which the virtual box or VM uh, virtualization software runs on. So in this uh, scenario, uh, we have in VM uh, VM uh, solutions, we have host and we have guest. So something similar in Docker, we have the uh, host, uh, which is going to be this machine. Now I am connected to my host, my uh, I'm currently working on my host. So you can see the terminal that is pointing right now. It's in my local machine. This is my local machine terminal. So it indicates that I am in my uh, host machine. And uh, we have something similar to uh, guest uh, or guest operating system. We have what we have in Docker is something similar. We uh, we can call it a guest operating system or we can just simply con call it a container. Okay, So uh, we have containers which we can uh, run and we can connect. So uh, first thing that we need to know uh, in Docker, uh, there are a few concepts that you guys need to know. Uh, there is the concept of images. Okay. So let me show what uh, what our images are and what sort of purpose it's uh, providing. So um, let me go to uh, Docker images. Start share. Okay. So. Um, so Docker image, uh, basically the uh, uh, basically what we can call is uh, it's the operating system and some additional things uh, added on top of it. So for example, uh, we can have uh, an we can have an image uh, which will which will be having um, which will be having uh, base images like. Uh, Ubuntu or something like that or we can have a base image uh, with some additional things so for example you guys can see there is an Ubuntu image which is one of the popular Linux distribution so <laughs> it has um, the base uh, Ubuntu operating system so if you go into this image repository the official image uh, for this so it's it's going to say what is this uh, image is all about. It is going to be saying what is Ubuntu and what is the images and everything that you need to know. So we can have multiple version of these images based on the Ubuntu version. So if you guys go to the tag sections and you will um, you will see probably the uh, different versions of Ubuntu. So Ubuntu have these code names like uh, Jemmy, Manic, uh, or the number uh, 2204 that's indicating the version that we are interested in. So, for example, say I want <coughs> to run uh, or I want to run an Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu uh, uh, 2204 within my local machine. All I have to do is get this image. Okay, once I get this image, I can run. Ubuntu 2.02 within my local machine. So that is uh, that is the purpose of uh, knowing the numbers and everything. So this is going to be a base image. Okay, this is going to be a very basic image. So it's going to have like a fresh install operating system. But sometimes what we need is we need the <clears throat> we need uh, some extra bits. Uh, uh, extra things uh, added to our image. Sometimes we need not only the base image, we need uh, something uh, something out of it. Uh, for example, let's say uh, we want uh, we want to have to run uh, uh, Postgres SQL uh, within our 
container. So what we need, we can do is either we can get the base image and install Postgres on top of it, or we can get an official image which is pre-installed Postgres into um, into an image. So uh, comparing base image to uh, uh, more uh, fine-tuned versions like Postgres one. So it it is. Um, it is based on top of the post uh, base image and we add Postgres to it. And once we are done with the Postgres installation, we will um, create another image which contain the base image as well as Postgres into it. So you guys can see that uh, how it's gonna be uh, really helpful when we are developing applications. Um, we can, uh, we can uh, take a Docker image which is pre-installed Postgres and we don't have to work on any other uh, any other uh, configuration on installing Postgres in the machine. So if you want, uh, let's say for in some instance, you want to have MySQL database uh, running in your machine. So you all you have to do is find the MySQL uh, Docker image and uh, probably you will need to uh, think about the version that it's provide. For example, there are like 8.0. If you want to go like something very old, there is 5.1s. And um, there are a lot of options available. So make sure you guys know what's, uh, what's the version that you need. And all you have to know is this tag, okay? So once the tag is known, you can download and run MySQL in your local machine. That is, uh, it is that simple. So, uh, first, you have to find your image on uh, on your use case. Then you need to download it uh, within your local machine. So, uh, so I'm 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 gonna be uh, working with uh, clustering. Uh, 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 database a clustering um, call uh, Cockroach DB Cockroach DB. Uh, let me find the uh, uh, right image. Give me a second. Uh, um, mm. Yeah, so I need to find the uh, cockroach DB image in order to work uh, with our application. So uh, what I'm simply doing is that um, if I want to run a cockroach DB uh, cluster in my machine, I need to first run the cockroach uh, DB uh, within my machine. So rather than downloading cockroach DB in my machine and uh, and running it uh, uh, running it via the installer or something like that, I can basically download the Docker image on that. Um, then I can set up the uh, application, a Cockroach DB application, without an issue. Okay, so I need uh, I need to get the uh, uh, Cockroach DB uh, um, um, Cockroach DB uh, Docker image. So let me check what is the official uh, Docker image that I can find. I think, uh, yeah. I have the I have the search option over here. I can go in here and say search uh, Cockroach DB. So um, you guys can see there are multiple version of Cockroach DBs uh, available. So I will go to one, and I will if I go to tags, you guys can see there are a lot of versions available uh, within in here. So um, even with these uh, installations within, within these machines, um, you guys can see that there are different versions of images. Like uh, this one is um, uh, this one is uh, version 23.11. Uh, 
and we have the up uh, to uh, 23 version one flips as well so the flips uh, might be containing different base image or something like that um there is amd uh, version as well so we can work with the amd 64 image rather than a uh, normal 32 image give me a second please Sorry about that. So uh, uh, when we are working with the uh, base images, we have a couple of options in here. So we have the um, we have different uh, versions. So you guys can see that this is version two point three, and this is AMD sixty four. So uh, the base image on these things might be different. So we need to make sure uh, which one that we'll be using. So in here, you guys can clearly see that this is going to work with the Linux uh, AMD 64 version as well as uh, ARM 64 version. In, by contrast, this one is only AMD 64 and this one is, uh, uh, we will find the ARM version as well. That means this is going to be uh, running on ARM operating systems only. Okay. So based on your, uh, based on your requirement, you can have uh, the version of your choice. Uh, the size may be a little bit different. You guys can see that this base image is around this size and the uh, AMD64 is a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, changed. But anyhow, once you are finalized with the image, um, so I'll, I'll be using uh, this version of Docker, uh, CockroachDB and the command in order to get the Cockroach DB into your local machine. So what you need to do is in order to run this, you need to get this Cockroach DB image into your local machine. Okay, you need to download it. So you don't really need to download it uh, via some uh, Chrome extension or some downloading software. All you have to do is execute this command. So basically I will copy this command and I will go to my um my machine and in my local uh, terminal what i do is i will explain this command what it means so docker is the command that we are trying to execute and the uh, command to download or to get the image into my local machine or local repository i use the command called pull so uh, when i say docker pull and uh, image name right now the image name is this one so it is uh, annotated by the provider and the version that we are you know, interested in so which uh, when i do this what will happen is it will connect to the docker uh, docker hub which is this website and it will download uh, the cockroach db this version into my local machine okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to execute this command and based on your internet connection, it might take a little bit of time. So uh, while it is downloading, um, we will uh, we will look into more more things in in uh, in this lecture. So uh, other thing is that if I say uh, if I want to see what are the images that I have already downloaded, which what are the images that is already available in my machine, I can simply say Docker images. Okay, so uh, as you guys can see, I have a lot of other uh, images downloaded in my machine as well. So I have Postgre, I have Keycloak, MongoDB. So these all are softwares that I use in that basis. Um, so whenever I want to start uh, Postgres 15.4, I will just use this image ID. This is the image ID. A unique ID is given for each and every image that we download. Or I can use the repository and tag version to run a Postgre in my local machine. Now, the beauty of it is that, um, say, for instance, uh, I need uh, one of my projects is running on older version of Postgre, and one of my new projects is running the latest version of 
Postgres. So in order to do that, uh, in order to uh, switch between the Postgres versions, because some Postgres versions have different features, and, and they might be not compatible with the latest one. To make sure that we are running the exact version, uh, what I need to do is um, I need to uh, have the Postgres versions uh, around here. So you guys can see uh, there is the Postgres 12.1 version as well as the uh, Postgres 15.4 version. So <coughs> my latest project is running uh, this image. So I can create a container out of this image. If my old project is version, working with uh, Postgres 12.1, I can use this image to run. So likewise, I can create multiple projects. I can create uh, uh, I can create multiple containers based on the version that I am uh, currently working with. So I uh, hopefully uh, our uh, cockroach uh, DB uh, is downloaded now. Uh, it is um, it is in here, so uh, I can see where I can verify it. So I will run Docker images once again, and let me clear that. Otherwise, it will clutter with the whole one. Yeah, here you can see uh, I can see cockroach DB, uh, the version that I have mentioned, and the image ID. Uh, is given for us. So the image ID is something that's a little bit hard to remember, but uh, uh, we can always uh, remember the repository as well as the tag. So I have a Cockroach DB instance in my machine. Now what I need to do is I need to make sure I I'm running uh, an instance of Cockroach DB. Okay. So in uh, this is the, like the base image. It is not uh, gonna create an instance for me. It is just gonna be there. Uh, so uh, the image is just like the uh, base of uh, base of the operating uh, base of the uh, software. It is not gonna run anything. Okay. So in order to run uh, an instance out of this, okay. I uh, think this is like the pre-installed CD, okay? Pre-installed uh, USB thumb drive to your application. It is not running an instance, okay? So what we need to do is we need to run an instance, instance of this uh, image. I will need to create an image. I need to create uh, an instance of this. So well, what we call uh, in Docker, uh, instance, a uh, running instance of uh, uh, image, we call that is a container, okay? So in order to run uh, uh, image, uh, we have set of commands. So once it is running, we we get a container. Okay. So I can see what are the running containers by simply saying Docker PS. Okay. Right now, I don't have any containers running. Uh, I don't uh, container is not running uh, or anything ha happens right now. There is nothing going on because my I just boot up my machine. There are no containers running. That's uh, soon enough. We will run uh, three containers of Cockroach DB and try to uh, make cluster out of it. So right now um, there are no running containers in between my machine. So I, I should be able to uh, create uh, a, uh, a cluster out of this and see whether it is working or not. Um, so yeah, so uh, how do I run a, uh, run a simple, uh, uh, I, how can I run an image or I can create an instance out of this, uh, uh, out of this. So it's really simple. You know, what we need to do, what we need to do is we need to uh, use a command called docker run. So uh, I, I'll uh, demonstrate this by using, um, uh, not something, uh, not something out of the, uh, uh, not something out of the uh, cockroach DB, but something from, let's say Postgre. I want to run a Postgre instance of this. So basically, what I have to do is say Docker run, and I need to give the uh, image to run a container. So I I need to run a Postgre instance. So I can either use uh, this repository slash tag version, or I can use the image ID. Okay, uh, the best version is to get the image ID. 
and that's it. So we can say, I can say Docker run and the image name. So what it is going to do is it's going to create a container out of this image and it will run. So, uh, okay. So in, in uh, when we are running the Postgre, uh, it is giving uh, some errors. That is because uh, whenever we are uh, running the Postgre application, basically we need to pass some uh, basic information in order to run the container. At, uh, at least we need to run a Postgre uh, password uh, to run the Postgres application. Otherwise, it will not be able to uh, run the application. So what I can do is I can pass some variables. Okay, when you are running this container, um, I need to run, I need to pass a variable. Uh, let's uh, let's say I want to pass the Postgres password variable. Uh, so I use this minus E parameter. Let's indicate an environment variable for Postgres DB. And the environment value is going to be Postgres password and value for it is going to be password. So basically what it's saying, uh, I will paste this one as well. So basically what it, what it is saying, uh, uh, docker run this image while you are running this image take the consider take into your account that i will be passing an environment variable minus e i will providing a environment variable the environment variable will be post case password and the value for it will be password so it what uh, what postgres is going to do is that Okay, they have provide a Postgres password. So whenever we, uh, I am creating a Postgres instance, uh, the database password will be this, okay? So if I hit enter again, I need uh, uh, database initializations uh, and super user and password, okay. Um, uh, so uh, I need to have the Postgres, um, password as well, a uh, username as well. So I need to pass another variable. Uh, it is called, if I'm not mistaken, Postgres user, and I will call it root. Uh, still, still not getting. So the best thing is that you need to do is uh, if you are following, uh, if you have issues, just go to the official image and they will give you the basic commands to run. Okay, here you, you can see, um, um, here you guys can see that uh, in order to run uh, the Docker image, uh, let me zoom in on so you guys can see. So in order to run a uh, basic image, you have to say Docker run. Yes, that is true. And the name parameter that is like the um, uh, a name for the container. So uh, if you are creating a container, a container would get an ID. But most of the time, uh, the container ID is something similar to the image ID that we are seeing in here. It's going to be some uh, an random number. It's going to be a hash. Um, it's going to be a portion of your uh, MD5 uh, uh, MD5 of that image. So rather than using these uh, random numbers, what we can do, we, we, we can use is uh, our own name. I think so we can say uh, we will run a Docker image and uh, Docker image and the container's name will be some Postgres. Okay, you can name whatever you want. And while we are uh, running this, I will like to set uh, the Postgres password. The Postgres password would be um, the Postgres password would be um, this. My uh, uh, it's going to be equal to my secret password, and uh, we can say minus d minus d indicate that it is going to be um, it is going to be. Uh, um, it is going to be uh, what we call uh, running on daemon mode. Daemon mode uh, makes um, uh, daemon mode says that it will be running on the background. We can uh, either omit or use the daemon mode, and we can uh, we can give the image name right around here. So I think what I am doing a mistake in here, uh, rather than 
giving the image ID at the end. I should probably give uh, give the image ID at the end. Okay, so uh, Docker run uh, environment variable is this, and the Postgres password, and make sure I know I get the Docker image name as well. So I will put it in here. As you guys can see, uh, there are a bunch of things uh, happening in here. Right now, you can see that um, um, okay. Uh, here, here is what I have. Uh, what I have started now. It says files belong to database, and this is basically the booting up of Postgres as we know it. Okay, so and you can see Postgres initial process completed, ready for startup starting uh, Postgres and this is the IP address and everything on. So database system is ready for action, acting connection. So that means uh, right now we are running a container uh, which is running Postgres. So how we can check, I, I will leave this terminal on, I will go to another terminal and uh, I would say Docker uh, PS, okay? So now you guys can see I have, uh, I have, uh, I have run the Docker ps command. This will list down all the uh, running Docker Docker images, Docker containers. Right now, I can see that I, there is one container. Okay, this one is the container that we have just created, and the image that is used to create this container, and what is the command, the entry point command, what is what was the executed command to make it start and when it was created how much uh, how much time it was uh, up and running and uh, what are the ports we will we'll come to ports in a little bit and what are what is the name that was given to it since we did not give a name it will generate it will randomly uh, select a name for it so that is like the basics uh, of creating a container Right now, I have a Postgres container uh, running in my machine, which is this one, okay? So if I hit comma, uh, control C in here, that means I am terminating that, and it is indicating the database system is shutting down. Now, if I go and see Docker PS, right now, you guys can see I don't have any running containers or anything else. Um, so once I have terminated the container, once I have terminated the container, it does not mean it is deleted, okay? The container is simply shut down. Uh, let's, we can assume that that machine, uh, that uh, container is in sleepy mode or something like that. So we can see what are the containers which are not running, okay? The simple command is docker ps, we have to pass minus a. Okay, so I have a lot of uh, containers which are not running at the moment, but you guys can see uh, um, uh, the um, the um, container that I have just created uh, a little while ago that is uh, visible under here. So uh, the container ID is something is the similar one that we use while it was running. So right now you guys can see the status is exited and it was created like two minutes ago. Right now it is not running, it is exited two minutes ago. So it is like in a resting mode. Say for instance, I want to run this container once again. Okay, I do not want to create uh, another new container. I want to run this existing container. Okay, I need to run this. So what I'll do is I need the container ID right now, not the image ID. If you are using image ID, we will create a new container. If you are using the container ID, the uh, container that we used, uh, the container that we created out of this image. If you want to run this container, I would just simply copy the container ID and let me clear it. And I can say docker run, sorry, docker start the container ID right now. The container is in stop mode. I can say, hey, Docker, start this container. Okay, so it will basically start the uh, container right now. You guys can see um, 
it is not block it is just gonna give me the number so what i will do is i will say docker ps right now again you guys can see uh, the container is running okay uh, when this container is running right now uh, it is running in daemon mode that means it is not blocked right now uh, what it needs is um, the what what it does is it's basically running on my uh, background okay you guys can see my normal uh, terminal name is here okay so that's indicate i am running uh, this uh, the docker com uh, docker container in the background so if i say docker ps again i can see this docker container so for some reason i want to stop this this uh, background running uh, container i would simply say docker stop and the container id so it's basically going to stop this if i say docker ps once again now there is no image running right now so uh, with this uh, with these commands and everything uh, i can run multiple containers i can run multiple containers which will which will create uh, multiple containers and i can communicate with that so uh, the the idea behind a cluster is running multiple version of uh, your database so as i mentioned earlier um, we'll be we'll not be using postgres in this scenario postgres clustering is a little bit hard uh, in order to do so we'll use something simple like cockroach db and we will see how we can uh, set up a cockroach db cluster in there so we we know um, that we know that uh, a clustering is happened and we'll see the uh, uh, cockroach db cluster in action okay so in order to get there in order to create a, uh, a cockroach db cluster we need uh, some uh, some basic understanding to docker that's why uh, I was creating this uh, section for you to understand. Okay. Um, so, uh, um, so um, what we need, uh, what we will we'll do right now is we will uh, we'll see what are the images. I think Docker PS would say, okay, I don't have anything running. The containers are, the containers that I'm currently running is now. Okay, so I have the uh, Docker image for CockroachDB. Let's say Docker images, and I can see the CockroachDB image is there. Now what I need to do is I need to run several instances or several containers of this um, CockroachDB version. So uh, let's do that uh, right now and see uh, what are the things uh, in a cluster that we need to make sure that uh, in order to create a cluster, how it should work. Okay, um, we'll be uh, uh, we'll be using a, a simple uh, single node cluster. Okay, we'll be in a, uh, so we'll be using a multi node uh, cluster. So we will have different nodes uh, in this scenario. Um, let me get that documentation. Uh, copy the documentation. I'll get. I'll go uh, straight to the um, single node cluster, and uh, we'll go to the multi node cluster in a little bit. Okay. Um, so let's see what's um, uh, what's a what it's to be uh, looking to uh, um, running a single uh, single node cluster. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so starting a single node cluster, that means we will be creating only one single, uh, only one single uh, instance of our database. That means um, it, it will be something like a one single database running on our machine. So uh, as it uh, wants, a single node cluster are not highly available or fault tolerant. They may not appear to for production use. Uh, it's uh, clearly states that okay if you are using this for development purposes 
that is okay. But if you are using this for production purposes, the highly available and fault tolerance will not be there. As we discussed yesterday in a monolithic application or even in a microservice application, uh, if we have only one single node, that single node will be uh, uh, will be the uh, place where all these things uh, gonna be uh, locked into. That means one single database should handle all the upcoming requests. That's gonna be a bottleneck. Okay, but we'll first see how we can write, write uh, run a single node cluster. Then we will move on to multi node cluster. How we can deploy this in in uh, in a more scalable or fault tolerance way. So first thing is um, uh, when we are creating uh, this kind of, uh, when we are creating a, 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 a Docker image, um, you guys can see that uh, this is a self-contained, uh, the image that we have created. Let me clear this first. So I will say Docker, uh, Docker PS minus A. So this is the uh, this is the image that we created just about now. Okay. So when this image is created, when this image is uh, is in work in progress, or when this is working, all the um, all the things uh, working uh, that needs for working this image is within that container itself. So for example, uh, let's say we want to write a file that file is written within this container id it is not exposed to outside okay for some reason if we if we if we take this container and if we remove this or destroy this it will destroy all the things uh, that is within that container itself so we won't have any saved data this is a database right so when we are when we are uh, when we are sending information to the database the database will um, the database will have all the information related uh, to that uh, insert queries, update queries, everything will be within this container. We are not exposing those in details to the outside, outside world. So what will happen if this container get destroyed, this uh, container get removed, corrupted, or anything like that? In, in that scenario, what will happen is all your data that you have, uh, that they have put in this uh, database, Will be lost. So to mitigate that or to overcome that, what we will do is we will uh, mount a volume. A volume in mount means the storage that we that this container will use will be not within the container itself, but it is outside of that container. It is like you create uh, you create a machine. You have a physical machine and uh, to safeguard your data, okay, rather than saving your information within your computer's hard drive, you save the information uh, to a USB stick, okay. So USB stick is something external to your computer, and once uh, once the saving is done, and if you say to remove your USB stick, even though your machine breakdowns, your USB stick will contain all the information, all the data that you need. It is like external location for your data so the container itself think this is as your machine and volume uh, it as the usb stick so whenever uh, we are whenever we are destroying the container itself we are destroying the containers and it is and it is uh, remaining things but all the data that is uh, that is saved we can safely put in a volume or a ex external storage so containers can have volumes. Uh, so we need to create a volume for it. Okay. So to create a volume, uh, volume is like a storage for uh, for it. So volume can be uh, attached to any container that we have created. So in order to create a volume, we need to use this Docker volume create command. So basically what it does, it is creating an external volume that we can mount to our uh, cockroach DB instance while it is running, okay? So whenever the container is running, anything that is saved is gonna be saved within this 
volume. The volume name is going to be Roche single. So anything that uh, the container is doing, anything that container runs, it will be saved in this Roche, uh, Roche single volume that we have created. So we need to create a volume first. And when we are running the container, we attach this volume to that container. Okay. So whenever we delete that, whenever we delete the container, container get deleted, but the volume still remain uh, attached to our computer. So it is like a safe place where we can um, back up our data or we can uh, externalize the data uh, using this command. Okay. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I will not create a, a single node uh, volume. We'll be creating that in multi-node setup. But basically, the idea behind the volume is uh, to attach this volume to our uh, container. And once we are done with the container, container can delete the volume still remains. Unless you delete the volume as well. Okay, So you can delete volumes, but in in here, what we will do is we will keep the volume uh, there. So, and remember, the volume part it is also matters. You can't, um, you can, you can actually map all the things in, within the container. But right now, we will be interested in cockroach uh, data directory only. So, cockroach and cockroach data uh, within the uh, image or within the container, you will have a cockroach and cockroach data uh, directory. So whatever we put in cockroach data will be mounted to volume. So we need to explicitly say when we are mounting this volume to the uh, container that we are going to uh, create, okay, use this uh, roach single volume and copy or have anything with roach and roach data uh, write to this volume okay so not we are not going to write everything within the uh, container itself we are specifically saying whatever in this um, whatever in this this location within the container write those data into this volume so that's that's the basic gist of it okay uh, so um we will look into this docker run command it's a little bit complicated uh, than what we had earlier on. Okay, let's e, let's go one by one and um, try to understand what it's uh, what it's uh, saying. Okay, so um, um, uh, this is creating a network. Okay, so basically. Um, what we are saying in here, uh, we'll say docker run, that is the command that we use to run a container out of an image in daemon mode. That means it will run on background. It will not connect to uh, our existing terminal. It will run on background. And you guys can see the dash dash env. It is something similar to dash e, that is the environment variables that we are providing. That simply says, okay, um, when we are running this uh, Docker content, Docker image, uh, pass this environment variable for cockroach to have it work. So we are we are providing the cockroach underscore database. So cockroach knows this environment variable. So that is considered when we are running the cockroach DB, it will it will look for environment variable like cockroach underscore DB. And whatever the name that we have provided, it will create a database out of that name. Okay. So whenever the cockroach DB, this version is running, it will look for environment variable name this. And the environment variable it is looking for is in here and it, uh, it will, um, the whatever the value that we have passed while it is creating, it will take this Procosh DB database name and use by the Procosh DB to start it. The same goes the Procosh user. That means um, whenever we are creating a Procosh DB instance, it will search for environment variable or Procosh underscore user. And whatever the username that we have provided, it will be used in uh, creation of the user. Same goes for Procosh password. 
whenever we are starting this, it will look for environment variable called for fetch underscore password. Whatever the password that we have given in here, it will be used as password. So basically, this information is needed for us to indicate uh, to create the cockroach DB. Without this basic information, without this uh, information, a cockroach DB cannot start because it needs to know about the username, the password, and the database that they are going to be working on. So these things should be provided in order to create a container. So we are providing them as environment variables. This is an environment variable, and this is how we pass an environment variable to our Docker container. And the la uh, next thing is the name. Name indicates saying that, uh, name indicates that the name uh, we are going to this container okay a container by default will have uh, an id which is generated for us but for uh, for the um, uh, for uh, referring it easy within our names we will use a name that is uh, human readable so we will name this container coach singer that is uh, uh, that is how we can uh, name this. And the host, we will get into host in a little bit later. Host is like uh, the network it's going to live on. Just skip it for now. We'll create a host and we'll understand what is going on. And the network, uh, um, um, the network that we, it's going to be creating. So basically, there are a couple of network uh, implementations that's going to be going on. Uh, basically, we will create a network as well. Uh, this hostname and network will come a, a more, uh, uh, it will be more explanatory, explanatory when we are going into the uh, multi node setup. So, basically, uh, the hostname um, it's going to give us a name to identify this within the network. So, we are within a uh, Rochnet. Okay, we are creating a network out of this. That means we are creating a network called RochNet. Within this RochNet, this uh, uh, this machine will be identified as Roch Single. Okay, so we will create a network called RochNet. Okay, there's a separate command for creating networks like we saw in volumes. So we, cre we will create a network and when we are connecting to that network, our name for this single instance will be watch single. Okay, so uh, this is coming more handy when we are using a multi node uh, setup because the host name should uh, be changing. Because otherwise, if we, we, we can't have a machine, we can't have uh, two machines having single host name. We need to identify those uh, machines as uh, different ones within a single network. It's like uh, it's like if some uh, say for instance you have a local network okay within the local network uh, there can be two or more machines so to identify each uh, each machine individually we give them a host name uh, probably we will give them an ip address or uh, a name a unique name so uh, let's say we have two machines if we have the same name for the two machines we can't identify those uh, two machines within the network so what we can do is we can provide the unique host name for each and every machines that we are running on, and we will get uh, a unique identification within the network. Okay. So uh, since this is a single setup, I don't uh, see a point of having even um, different host names. So, but uh, to identify this machine, we will use this watch single host name. Uh, so this is the single not setup. And this is the identification within the network, and this is the network that we are trying to connect. So that is the simple of it. We will see it in action in uh, multi node setup a little bit later. Right now, uh, I have an idea what these two uh, parameters do. And then the next thing is the uh, minus p uh, command, which we call the port. So whenever we are running a Docker, uh, Docker container. Uh, we call the Docker container that uh, that is running. Um, there are two sides of it. One is the host, and one is the container. Okay. 
So one is the host, one is the container. So uh, always when we are doing a port, uh, when uh, if we do not specify a port, what will happen is the Docker image that we have run right now, this Docker image, it is not exposed export to the host machine. Okay, it is isolated. It is right. It is running on a sandbox kind of environment. That means uh, it is running. Of course, it is doing something. Yes, but the host and the container have no connection, no way of communicating uh, with each other. Okay, in order to communicate, we we need to uh, we need to expose some ports. For example, for uh, in our uh, in our web developments or whatever we are doing. Uh, if you go uh, the uh, the address that you see, cockroachlab.com. Uh, so this is the IP address or this is the domain name that we are having and the port that we are running, since we are running on HTTPS, the port will be 44, sorry, 443. Okay, this is not 3443, 443. So that means um, we are going to this address under port 443 okay so same goes in here we have our host machine so host machine uh, will have this port allocated 26257 uh, and it will be mapped to 2657 in our container so that means um, whatever the host uh, whatever the container uh, whatever the container port 26257 is running is now mapped to 26257 within our host machine. So if you want to access something within the uh, 2657 uh, within the container, now we can do that using the uh, guest 26257 uh, 26 port as well. So this is what we call a port mapping. Uh, the host, uh, the the container will uh, expose its this port to this number. So if if you if you do not have this port uh, exposed in your low host machine, you can change it. It it should not be the same thing. You can have a different value if you like. So for example, within your host machine, within your machine where you run these Docker containers. The port two six two five is uh, two five seven is taken by another one. You can't have two uh, process running uh, running for the same port. So what you can do is, if this port is taken, you can simply change the port number. Let's say uh, we I will link uh, two five uh, the uh, the last uh, digit eight one is not taken. So I can simply uh, say eight in here. So whatever. Uh, 26257 is sending out from the container. Now I can access that within uh, my host machine using 26258, not, not 7, but 8. So I can change the port even, but you can't change it in the host because host is already allocated this one. Uh, sorry, the container has already allocated this one. You can't change this, but within the host, you can change the number if it is already in use. But if it is not, you can use the same as the uh, container. So it, it is something that uh, if you are getting a block blocked, port blocked, you can change it in your host. But most of the time, uh, if these are not in use, you can use the same as the um, same as the container to be host to avoid confusions. Why? Because um, it's going to be easy to map these host within the same uh, same port. Uh, okay, this is the port mapping. So there are two port mappings in here. We can have uh, many uh, port mappings as we like. So the container is exposing two ports, a port 8080 and port 26257. So both of these ports need to be uh, mapped into my host machine. So I'll be using two port uh, mappings in here. So in the first one, I will map this and the second one I will map 8080. Uh, so uh, right now within my host machine, I have uh, two ports accessible to my container. Okay, we'll see why this port mapping is important. 
right now simply think uh, accessing uh, the containers whatever the data is ending within this port we can access within our host okay probably the 8080 port will send http http server so we can access that and uh, we talked about uh, volumes so in volumes i can uh, you guys can uh, remember we created a volume called roach single and we are mounting that volume using minus v command so using minus v i will say roach single colon this is the volume name and uh, colon separates the host and the container and we can say whatever in in container cockroach cockroach data will be put into root single volume so when whatever which is whatever we are writing in here will be put into these volumes okay so these are like the environment variables which is needed and the next thing is the image name itself you guys can see this is the image name and uh, there are commands uh, that we that we can pass to the cockroach db so when we are running the cockroach db this is the image that we will be using and this is the command that we say to cockroach db to start with okay this is a command let's say okay let's start this uh, let's uh, let's use this image and while 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 you are starting this image execute this command so we can get started so this is something uh, uh, this is this command is uh, something uh, uh, unique to uh, cockroach db so it say start a single node and the http address will be localhost 8080 so you can see um, it will start a local uh, uh, http address which the port 8080 and you guys can see port 8080 is used to map into our server as well so this indicate we are running a simple http server within our container and that container is uh, using uh, container port 8080 mapping will give us inside the container itself if you do not specify the port number you can't access that container in in vrs okay so make sure uh if you if you want to access any port you need to export expose it otherwise you won't be able to use it okay so this is the uh sorry so this is the basic command mm. and this is the basic command that we will be running and um um we will see this um we will um, uh we will uh, use this knowledge we have uh to this is a single node cluster but we will be using um, a multi node cluster in order to work uh, with our setup so basically if you run this it will create a single node uh, single node cluster but uh, we will just skip it if you want you guys can uh, create a single node cluster but our in our situation in our demonstration what we are interested in is not in a single node but in a multi node situation so we will uh, we will straight go to the multi node uh, uh, multi node situation and try to understand uh, how it works so i'll go to the multi node setup okay so uh, it now since we know a little bit of docker uh, what is a single node and what is a volume what is a network we will straight dive into uh, creating a cluster uh, we will uh, we will create a cluster uh, using um, using uh, the commands that we have learned okay before we dive into the uh, multi node cluster you guys have any questions anything uh, within docker itself uh, probably anything anyone okay hopes not so let's uh, dive in uh, and um, uh, i think uh, probably we will have a multi node cluster set up in uh, in, in no time okay we'll see how the uh things will work there all right 
So, uh, first thing first, uh, since we are working in multi node uh, scenario, we will need a bridge to work with. We will need a network to work with. In real life, uh, it would be a network of physical networks because we don't want to run a, a cluster within a single machine because that is what we call a, not a fail a fault tolerant solution. Why? If our single machine is uh, so for some reason you get corrupted it is down or it is not responding as expected the whole network will down so it's it's going to be a single point of failure to avoid that what we can do is um, we can uh, use a, a real network that we that we uh, that would uh, have multiple machines connect to each other but right now to demonstrate the for demonstration purposes we don't need uh, a physical network. What we will do is we will create a Docker network inside our Docker container and we will use that as our starting point. So uh, right now uh, we will create a network using the Docker network command. And um, in here, uh, we will create uh, a Docker uh, um, Docker network names Rochnet. Okay, so the name for our Docker network is going to be uh, Roch Rochnet, and the minus D bridge. Uh, it's not daemon mode in here. Uh, minus D bridge means the uh, driver that we will be using for creating this network. Okay, there are few uh, drivers mode which you can use. You can use within when we are creating a Docker uh, image. Okay, for now, this will be using uh, the driver bridge mode. Okay, you can see the different um, uh, bridge networks, uh, um, sorry, net network drives. We'll simply use a bridge uh, in our case. You feel free to look at other drivers as well. You can even create uh, these kind of things in a network as well. That is uh, out of this scope of this application right now. Uh, simply, what we will do is we will create uh, a Docker network named Rochnet. Okay, that is uh, uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to copy this. Let me clear the uh, clear that, and voila, uh, we have a network created for uh, network created to us. So this is the network ID. So we will probably don't remember that. But we will remember the name that we have given, Rochnet. So I can see the Docker uh, networks that I have created. Docker net uh, work ls. So it 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 gives us all the networks that is available uh, right now. So I have a lot of networks right in here, but I have one uh, Rochnet that I have created uh, so far. So I have uh, this uh, network called Rochnet, and it's uh, the driver is going to be bridge, and the scope will be local. So I have a network. That means whenever uh, whenever the Docker daemon is running, it's going to create. Uh, it's going to have a network named Rochnet, and whatever the containers that we are running will be connected to this network only. So within the network, if you specify a network to a container it will connect to this network okay this is like a virtual network that, uh, that that is there okay so we have created the network a virtual network within our application and let's go move forward okay um so as you can uh, as you guys can see we will be creating uh, we'll be creating an uh, application um uh, we'll be create uh, We'll be creating an application, uh, which will contain, uh, which will contain three nodes. Okay, uh, we we will have three nodes, which is uh, what we call uh, uh, have the uh, bridging in place. Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, network in place or cluster in place. We will need three machines, three nodes. Uh, to communicate with each other. So in this scenario, uh, we will need 
three uh, volumes. Okay, you can skip volumes since uh, this is a demonstration, but it's better you keep in mind that um, uh, keep in mind if we have a volume, we uh, even though the uh, container get disappeared, container get destroyed, the volume will uh, uh, will have a backup of it, so you don't have to uh, worry about uh, data loss. Okay, so we have the Docker volume create command. So using this command, what it will do is it will create three volumes. Okay, the names is Roch one, Roch two, and Roch three. So we will create three volumes. Okay, right now we are making the preparation for creating our application. We have Roch one, Roch two, and Roch three. Okay, so if I say Docker volume ls so i can see uh, there are three volumes in here uh, roch1 roch2 and roch3 so um so in 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 our application you guys can see we have created the uh, we have created the um, volumes that we need first we create the network then we created the three volumes so network uh, we'll see how all these things are getting connected. Okay, um, the fun part begins in here. Uh, we will create the three nodes that we are gonna uh, that we are gonna call. So um, first thing first. Uh, so remember, uh, uh, listen to this carefully because other tools you I will randomly ask from you guys to explain it. So make sure if you do not did you if you did not listen earlier on, uh, I will explain this once, and you guys should answer me the next things um, uh, in the upcoming uh, upcoming explanation. So you guys should say uh, what are the things that you're gonna be running. Okay, uh, first thing is um, um, so we will be. Uh, we will be uh, running a Docker container in daemon mode. And the name for this container will be Roch1. The host name, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is like a unique identifier within the network. And you guys can see dash dash network. We are saying, okay, when we are running this container, connect to Rochnet. We have created Rochnet earlier on. And we have, we, we are saying, Connect to this Rochnet uh, when you are uh, when you are running this uh, Docker command when you are running this uh, con container. So the container is bounded to this network, so it it won't send any traffic out of this network. So it is an isolated one. And when you are within this network, make sure to use the name Roch One as your host host name. So within this network, within this Rochnet. Uh, network to identify this uh, container we give the host name as watch one okay you can uh, if you are probably familiar with uh, something like uh, networking this will be something similar to the ip address because ip address is unique so you have the ip address in here so watch net one is the name that we will use between bit within the network itself okay and the next thing is pretty obvious. We are exposing ports, port 26257, and within the host itself, we have port 25627. We are exposing that, and port 8080 also exposed in here. And for running this container, we will be using the volume Roch1, which we created recently. And everything within Crouch uh, and Crouch port slash DB within this location will be stored in the volume watch one okay whatever the container uh, data within this directory within this dir within the container this container data will be backup or will be stored in volume watch one okay and this is the con uh, this is the image which is this is the image that we will be using to spin up the container which we have already downloaded and this is this section this this point this uh, um, this portion of the application or this section would be 
totally something uh, will be given to cockroach db to start the uh, multi node cluster so it's say okay start it okay this is a command that we give to the cockroach db that is running so the command is start and the advert uh, advertise address this is um, where we 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 we, uh, we uh, say that uh, yes this is where we say that the roach one in here the host name uh, roach one is the advertising address and the port which we will use is uh, 2627 this is where we can say hey uh, we are uh, we are creating uh, we are creating uh, uh, we are creating um, uh, a roach cluster and uh, uh, to create to con communicate with that cluster to uh, make connection uh, this will be the address that we will be using so host name is roach1 and the communication port the advertising port will be 26357 so okay remember this is not the same address as what you see in here 2637 is the advertising address this port will be used to advertise or say okay we are a multi-node uh, application uh, we are multi-node application anyone who wants to connect to this uh, cluster use this port to communicate with us okay to use uh, to communicate with us use this port okay otherwise the other nodes will will not uh, do not know what port to communicate what port will be uh, advertising all the cluster related information okay we are creating a cluster we are synchronizing all those things will be uh, gone through this 26357 port so whatever we are doing uh, make sure the advertising address is uh, is uh, said so when we are starting our cockroach db we say okay roach one advertising will be done within this address okay the http uh, address this is for simply showing us a console okay so uh, the http address is going to be roach uh, the host name and the port number we will look into that so these all all of these are like uh, nothing to do with docker but to uh, make the multi node uh, setup with roach so we we will try to understand the components behind a multi uh, cluster application first the advertising port the port where we can communicate uh, this one http port is just for uh, showing us uh, the information and the listener address okay the listener address is what you can see it is same as uh, same as the um, advertising address so between uh, using this address we will listen to events uh, emitting by the cluster so the cluster is emitting so many uh, things it will listen those things in this listener address okay so advertising address listen address and the next thing is sql address sql address is where you um, you will uh, be able to connect to the sql uh, sql connections that means the database connection will happen to this port that is same as the port that we are exposing that means uh, let's say for example we want to communicate with cockroach db uh, from outside world uh, like a, a web application or um, some sort of desktop application so we need to have this uh, ip address exposed so uh, anyone else in the uh, host machine can directly communicate with that so this is like where the sql things going on this is where the all the events listeners going on this is where all the advertising going on so different ports um, have different purposes so insecure uh, it is uh, to indicate that we are running in uh, not under uh, any ssl certificate or something like that um, we are just saying that um, this will be in a, in a non-secure environment we are not going to use any ssl certificate or just to make sure we are not configuring the SSL configurations and all, we just say we are running an insecure environment. That's it. And the next thing is the join command. 
join command uh, gives us a heuristic where to join. So we have Roch in uh, Roch one in this address. We have Roch two in this address, and we have Roch three in the same address. So this is like a heuristic that we give to CockroachDB. So whenever we want to uh, join to a cluster, uh, reach out to these machines. Okay, you guys can see it is the uh, the name and the host name are same. So since we are talking in the network sense, the Roch one is the host name and the port name. So we are self connecting to our own network. Okay, so we are we are joining to our own network uh, when we are creating the cluster, and we have Roch two. Uh, which we did not start yet, and we have Roch3, uh, also we did not start it yet. So basically, in here, we are creating a, a cluster uh, that will uh, that will start with these environment, uh, or these with, with these parameters, and these parameters for CockroachDB to set up the multi-node setup. So let's move on to uh, the next section. <laughs> Uh, it, it is, you can see, it is uh, uh, identical uh, uh, to the setup that we have seen in the, um, that we have seen in the, um, uh, the setup that we have seen in, in our, uh, in our, uh, uh, not one setup, but only difference is, uh, uh, the name is Roch2, host name is Roch2, network is going to be the same. Okay, If you define a different name, then uh, Roch2 will be running on a different network, Roch1 will be in different network. So those two, since the network uh, communication is running on two networks, they do not know how to communicate with each other. So in order to avoid that, Make sure the host name is unique. The name should be also unique. Otherwise, Docker will get confused. Host name should be unique because when we are using it in the network, the Roch2 should be identical from Roch1. And you guys can see clearly the ports. Ports are different, uh, at least uh, incremented by one. Uh, earlier, it was ending at seven, now ending at eight. Okay. Ports, uh, now it is 881. But Corresponding to that, you guys can see the address size address is not changed unless uh, the host name is changed in here. IP address, uh, HTTP address has also changed. You guys can see if you want to uh, if you want to reach for, uh, reach to uh, HTTP port, you have to use 8081. Right now, HTTP address for this one is 8081. Okay. So when we are starting out the uh, application, we are saying start the HTTP server on port 8081. Earlier, we used port 8080 for the ROCH1. For ROCH2, we are using 8081. That means uh, we are instructing, we are instructing uh, the, uh, we are instructing the uh, application to run in a different port, the HTTP server to in a different port. And the listed address and uh, listed address is changed. Uh, at least the host is changed, otherwise the port are same. And you guys can see the SQL address also changed. So if somebody is connecting to this application, if somebody is connecting to uh, the SQL database, you guys can see it is uh, ending with eight right now. Earlier it was seven. Now the if you individually want to connect to this IP address, it will be eight. And uh, the insecure and join uh, are going to be the same. So we, when we are joining in, uh, we will join to these uh, IP addresses as usual. So probably you you, uh, you see the similarities uh, with the Roch three. That is the third node. Name is changed. Host is changed. Network will be the same. Port will be incremented by one. Uh, same goes to the uh, SQL port and the HTTP ports. Volume has changed, but the location they are, uh, we are mapping with the host is going to be the same. And we have the um, we have the um, uh, URL uh, in here that is going to be same. And we'll be um, starting in here. Uh, we'll be starting the application 
Address address will be this. Okay, that is not changed and uh, with uh, only the um, port has changed. Uh, the host name has changed. HTTP address has changed. Uh, name and the port has been changed according to this to avoid port conflicts. Listen address you can see the host name is same and the chain uh, and the uh, uh, port that we are listening in and advertising it's going to be the same thing. SQL address as usual it will it should change otherwise there will be a port conflict. Insecure and the joint operations are going to be the same. All right, uh, let's uh, let's see that um, um, let's run this ex, uh, run these commands and see whether we can get a nice uh, cluster in place. So what I'll do is I'll copy paste this one. Okay, I got one container running. I will copy the second container, second node. Paste it. Okay, another container just added. And I will create another container, which we successfully created three containers. Now, if I clear this out, and if I say Docker PS, now you guys can see, uh, let me make it a little bit smaller. Uh, so I, we can see in uh, one go, I'm not sure whether this is helping uh, you guys to see visually. Okay, that's the maximum that I can go. So I have three containers running and all are using the same uh, cockroach image. And the command, the command is the command that we have executed when we are, uh, when we are using this, uh, when we are starting this. Created date and status, it's gonna be changed because we have a little bit of delay when we are creating that, that's okay. Now, if you look at uh, the port mappings and everything, um, uh, if you look at Roach3, uh, they have uh, port mappings uh, from 8082 to 8082 in our machine and the uh, port 59 to uh, Port uh, 59, same goes to uh, Roach 2. And uh, the master node, the first one we have created, port 8080 is mapped to port uh, uh, 8080 in our local machine. And we have the uh, um, the other, other nodes, as you can see, it's basically mapped to the ports that we have given. And the names that we have given, it's going to be the same. So since we have access to our uh, uh, access to our uh, machine, uh, so we we should be able to go to uh, localhost eighty eighty. I think uh, we have another um, eighty eighty one. So rather than showing anything else like uh, not not found, you guys can see there is the page is not found. That means a web server is running. Only the URL that we are using is wrong. So let me get the uh, manage IP address so we can uh, 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 we can create. Um, so still the initialization did not happen. So we will go to the next step. So we have uh, we have uh, uh, three containers running on our machine. So that's good. And we need to um, perform a one-time initialization for our cluster. That means, okay, we, we, we have set up everything in order to work. Now we need uh, to initialize the uh, initialize the cluster setting up. Okay, uh, this is a one-time thing. So perform a one-time initialization for the cluster. The example runs on cross init command for within a Roach one container. So we need to go to Roach one container and we need to say okay init uh, initialize the node. Uh, but you can run it from container or from external system that uh, can reach the Docker host. Okay, let's see how well. Uh, rock, uh, cockroach init connects to the address node, advertising address, rather than node SQL address. 
replace roach uh, one uh, with nodes advertise address value of the node is um, not the SQL address. This example run cockroach command directly on the cluster, but you can run on the in intercommon first. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, uh, initialize the cluster. So in order to initialize this cluster, we need to connect to roach one, uh, roach one, uh, uh, Roach one container. So you guys can see we have created a, um, a Docker um, Docker uh, machine with the name Roach one. So going to Roach one and executing uh, executing the command will initialize the um, will initialize the um, cluster setup. Okay, that's gonna finalize the cluster setup. So how are we gonna do that? We will uh, we need to reach for Roch one, okay. We need to get inside the Roch one, uh, Roch one, uh, uh, Roch one container. So in order to go to Roch one container, uh, we will use the Docker exe command. So right now these are running on. Uh, if you say Docker ps, these are running on daemon mods. Okay, these are running on, on the background. So I I need to connect to this one of these machines okay i need to connect to this one of these containers so in order to connect to a running container we will use the docker exe command okay uh, docker exe and minus it so let me just connect to that like not initialize it uh, right now have a clear look at the terminal that i am in right now i am in my host machine my uh, macbook pro so I need to connect to the uh, Roch one container. Okay, I need to uh, go inside the container that I am that I have created. So I can use the Docker exec minus it, and I need to give the name that I want to uh, connect. I uh, will say Roch one. So that means I am saying Docker. I need to execute. I need to get uh, execution permission for Roch one and what is the entry point? I will say bin, I think probably this will say run from bash. So basically what I'm saying is uh, I, I will gain access to Roch one and starting point of my application will be the bash entry point. So if I click here, now you guys can see clearly the base right earlier it was the MacBook Pro. Now I am at root Roch one. That means right now my terminal is not connected to my host, but I am inside the Roach one uh, container itself. Right now I am inside the container itself. So how do I know that? If I say PWD, you can see I am at cockroach DB, uh, cockroach. Okay. So if I say LS, you can see cockroach, there is cockroach, cockroach data, and cockroach SH. Okay, so these are everything that is uh, within the uh, container itself. Okay, if you guys can clearly remember, we had a volume, Roach 3, or all the volumes are similar. So we have a volume called uh, mounted cockroach and cockroach data. So you guys can see uh, if I PWD, now I am in the cockroach. If I say cockroach data, uh, CD cockroach. Uh, data and uh, ls so all these uh, files uh, within this location if i say pwd so i am at this location and this location have these files you guys can see these files so all of these files will be within the volumes that we have defined so we know uh, even though the uh, even though the container is destroyed the files will be remaining within the uh, within the uh, application itself. So that is something uh, that is something we can uh, we can have we can uh, relate. So make sure the cockroach DB is uh, running uh, in 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 here. Um, so we are inside the cockroach DB right now, and I can directly execute this command. 
since I am there, since I am within the cockroach uh, instance, or I can, uh, without logging into that machine, without logging into the actual implementation, actual container itself, I can run this from outside and it, it will initialize the Since I am in, I will just uh, execute this command to initialize the container, uh, the cluster, plus initialization will happen. So I would go in here to make sure I have cockroach SH. Yes, this is, this is the one that I am using. So I'll say, uh, I will execute this command. So since I am inside the cluster, I have named this, I have executed here. But if you are coming outside, you don't need to log in. I just want to show you guys how to log into the container itself using docker exe command. And since I am in, I will just say cockroach uh, host and I will execute this. So you can see the cluster successfully initialized. That means our cluster has been created. So all, all the setup that we have done, all the uh, localization, everything we have done. And now it is um, it is showing as expected. So um, we can, uh, each uh, nodes uh, also prints a helpful uh, uh, setup details for its log. For example, following command grips will uh, we, uh, from Roach1 container display. Uh, cockroach data logs for cockroach and uh, not starting uh, in the next line alerts. So uh, we we will see uh, we, if we execute this grep command, we can see uh, uh, we can see the uh, logs that we have created. So it will show all the details about uh, about all the information that we are currently having. Okay, and we can just skip it right now because it's not going to show us anything uh, other than the information um, to connect to the cockroach DB and everything. Okay, these are like uh, logs files that is created. We, uh, if you really want to see the information about the cluster and everything, uh, there will be information. So you can see uh, is one thing that uh, we need to uh, make sure the cluster ID that we can see in here and the node ID. Okay, when we are creating a cluster, we will get a cluster ID. Okay, this is clear. This is uh, uh, this is created. Uh, this is uh, connected to this cluster and the node. Node is uh, the uh, the instance number it, it, it is having it, it's gonna have not one so uh let's see uh well, just for fun i will uh, disconnect from the uh from the container itself i will just say command d so i am back uh, control d i am back at my um, host machine i have exited you can see it in here right now i am not within the container itself so I can see uh, this command and probably you will see the information and there is the cluster ID and everything. Uh, probably I don't see the, uh, um, what do you call the, the uh, yeah, uh, so not the ID. So I will clear this once again. So I will take, uh, I will look at this log and I will look for 15 lines. And you guys can see the initialization new cluster has happened, cluster ID is given and the node ID for watch one is gonna be uh, node one. So I'll execute the same command, uh, the same command, uh, rather than I'm executing at watch one. Uh, let me execute uh, that in Roach2. Okay, so Roach2. Uh, let me clear that. Oops. Yeah, and now you guys can see I am uh, executing this against Roach2. And Roach2 uh, have the node ID of three. That means it's uh, it, it came to the part a little bit late. So two was taken. Uh, so node ID was three. Probably Roach three will have node ID of two. Let's see that in action as well. So I'll see 
scotch tree. When I face it, yes, you can see uh, the node ID for watch three is two because uh, for some reason not not three came earlier. And you guys can see the cluster ID for each and every um, node is the same. That means we are connected to the single cluster, not uh, not not something else. Okay, um, so our cluster is initialized. We have all the clusters running in and everything is working as expected. Um, so now uh, the fun begins. We we have created our cluster. That means the there are three nodes within, within our cluster and it is, um, it is connected uh, to each other and um, they are synced up, the cluster is up and running, okay? Now we'll see the cluster in action, whether uh, all the SQL instances that we are running, the Cockroach DB, have the sync ability or they, are they synced uh, as we expected, okay? All right, uh, before we continue, shall we take a 10 minute breaks? Uh, because it's gonna take a little bit time of that. Okay, uh, all in favor for 10 minute breaks? Raise your hand, please. Hello? Uh, shall we take a 10 minute breaks, guys? I'm, I'm... Since we have one hour to power, I need some water in my mouth. Okay, we'll take a one minute, uh, 10 minutes break. We will come back at 10, okay? I'll pause the recording. Back as well. Right, so uh, let's recap uh, what we have done. So we, uh, we created a cluster. We created a cluster in order to create a cluster, and we, we need to run it in. Uh, better we create a network out of it. So we created the network using the Docker network create command. Uh, you created the network. Then we created three volumes to uh, reside our data within the three containers that we are about to run. So we created three volumes. Once the volumes are created, what we did was we uh, uh, we ran uh, mm, we ran uh, um, we ran three uh, Docker containers, uh, Roch one, Roch two, and Roch three. Each and every one of them had a little bit of different configurations, but more almost uh, numbers and IDs are changed, but the commands and everything looks something a little bit identical. So we run, we ran the three uh, Docker containers. So we have three, uh, three clusters, uh, sorry, three nodes that uh, that is connected. Actually, it's not connected at the initial point. And what we have to do is we need to initialize the cluster. Otherwise, what will happen is it's not gonna connect uh, with each other. So we have initialized using the Roch1 uh, container. So we executed, we actually we, um, entered the Roch1 container and execute this command for initializing the uh, container, uh, uh, initialization of the uh, process. So what you can see in here, we have successfully initialized the cluster and we can see the cluster information by uh, looking at the Procoach uh, log data. So we we looked at uh, the uh, logs by using a simple grep command, and we looked into 11s so or whatever the numbers of um, lines that we are interested in. So we are uh, saying that node has started, uh, we got a cluster ID and a node ID. So probably the first one will be uh, the IDs that we will get uh, for, uh, for node two and three will be a little bit different, but um, 
they are not matching the host name or the person name, but at least they are actually, uh, they are working with. Uh, they have some node ID uh, that uh, indicates that ah okay this is uh, this is having uh, uh, this is having a node ID like this. So next thing that we need to do is we need to check upon uh, that our cluster is uh, working as expected, okay? Uh, probably one thing that I need to look into, uh, CrocodileDB uh, HTTP server, let me check. CrocodileDB uh, HTTP address. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, 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 I think probably something that we need to do is uh, the Roche address. Uh, the HTTP address should be different as I think. Uh, let me see. Uh, I do not. It's not something uh, 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 what you call uh, super important, but uh, it's nice to have. Uh, local host yeah most of the time it, this should be local host but anyhow we'll, we'll just skip it for now okay um, let's see this in action uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, um, we're gonna start a simple uh, shell okay we will log into the shell and we will execute um, we will execute some command and see whether that uh, executing these commands will affect on the others one as well. So uh, uh, using the docker exe command, I will uh, reach out to uh, roch1, roch1 uh, container. And within that, I will uh, access to the roch1 SQL uh, command, which will grant me access to the SQL database, uh, SQL uh, console at least. And um, uh, from there, uh, the host that I am trying to connect, the place that I am going to be using is not going to be the Roach 1, but I will be connecting to uh, Roach 2. Okay, the host parameter says, where do I want to, where do I want to uh, uh, connect? So from Roach 1 machine, uh, I will be connecting to Roach 2. Okay, so uh, that that indicates uh, that I am running in one single machine, but uh, I am connecting to another host. Okay, you guys can see the host uh, host name in here, Roch two, and the um, uh, you guys can remember uh, two five two uh, five eight is the SQL port. If you look at uh, the configuration carefully. Um, this is the SQL address. It is ROC2 and uh, the port is 26258. Okay. So if you are executing anything related to SQL, this is the address that you want to use. If you do not use this address, you can't execute any SQL address, SQL commands. So that is the basic thing that we're going to do. So using the ROC1 uh, SQL uh, interface, I will connect to ROC2. Uh, Roch2 is uh, Roch2 Roch2 uh, um, SQL instance. That means um, within uh, Roch1, I am connected to Roch2 machine. So let me do that. Okay. So you can see that I am uh, within the Crocodile DB SQL shell, and um, it gives me a uh, basic uh, in, a basic uh, things uh, that I can do. For now, uh, what I'll do is I will simply create a 
database its name as back so let me execute that you guys can see that it is saying that create database is executed and it took this amount of time and we are golden and next thing i would do is i will create uh, a account with id and balance with decimal points so remember that i am uh, right now i am in procroach 2 okay i am creating everything in procroach 2 so i have created the procroach 2 uh, a, a database a table and i will insert some records in here as well so insert into bank account value one and uh, we have 1050 cents so we have insert a record as well so uh, let me select query on that let me see uh, whether it works yes you guys can see if i select all from the bank accounts uh, it it shows me uh, that the information are uh, there okay uh, now what i'll do is i will quit uh, quit the uh, sql shell so remember we executed everything using roch1 uh, roch1 container but we connected to roch2 database so whatever the uh, uh, whatever the things that we have executed right here was executed on Roch2 database, okay, Roch2 instance or Roch2 not, okay. Everything that happens, happens in this not. So uh, we we executed, we created a database, everything and in here, we, um, we were able to get it done. And uh, Right now, we um, we exited from the um, uh, itself. So next thing that I will do is I will um, <clears throat> I will uh, uh, I will uh, I will execute uh, 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 Sorry, uh, I will uh, I will go to Roch two, and uh, and execute these uh, things as well. So so earlier I was connected using Roch one, Roch one I was using Roch one. Now I will go to Roch two and uh, connect its own uh, SQL instance. I'm not gonna go with uh, something else. Uh, so let's see how it's uh, it's going to look in Roch2 itself. So it's going to be the same. So I will clear. So now uh, I am connecting to Roch2 and connecting to its own network, the SQL instance. So if I, if I uh, execute, uh, select queries from there, now I get the same results because I was earlier on Roch2. So it's going to be saying the Roch2 as well. So, uh, so what uh, what we can see is uh, we we got the uh, information uh, in Roch two. So we have verified everything that that is going on on Roch two that is working as expected, and uh, uh, what we'll do is we will uh, connect to Roch one with its host and see whether this data is available there as well so we we executed everything on roch2 roch2 is uh, in place so we know every everything related to the database is in there so what we will what we'll do is we will uh, copy this so i am going to go into roch1 the same one and roch1 and the port the sql port is the default one that we had so i am going to be connecting to the first node okay you guys can see in here so let's copy the same uh, instance and you guys will see that right now i am in cockroach one right i am in cockroach one and i am connected to cockroach one uh, SQL instance and I still have that information 
uh, which I executed on Roach2. Okay, so I have this information in Roach2. So let me do one more thing. While I'm having this instance, um, I will go back to Roach2 instance, connect it, it from its own. So this is the Roach2 instance. So right now I am connected to Roach2 and its own uh, SQL. So this is Roach1 and it is own equal and this is Roach2 it's, uh, with its own equal, okay? Uh, right, we have two, one, uh, two, uh, two instances, Roach2 connected to its host, Roach1 connected to its host. So right now I will execute something in Roach2, uh, probably, uh, I will insert, uh, I will do an insert query. Uh, probably I need to change the ID in here. Let me change the ID and the amount. Let's say I got a little bit richer and I say I will uh, add 2000. So the query, remember uh, we are in ROCH2 or we can go in ROCH1, whatever at, at uh, that works. So I will say insert into bank accounts. Uh, bank is the database, account is the table. Values, this uh, the ID is two and the amount is 200. So right now, take a play a course, close attention. I am in Roach1 connected to its own SQL instance and I am inserting a record in Roach1, okay? So insertion happened, no, nothing uh, went wrong. Right now, I will go to Roach2, look at the address. I am in Roach2 and connected to its own instance. And what I'll do is I will do a select query. Now you guys can see, even though I inserted the record in Roach1, it is also available on Roach2, okay? So if I uh, select from here, you guys can still see that uh, anything that I inserted in Roach1, immediately available on Roach2 as well. So we can go on and on. Uh, we can check with Roach3 and see whether all these things are working. So let us let me do one more time with that as well. Uh, first thing I will be uh, connecting is to Roach3. Um, so what we will need is the Docker command to connect to that. Where yeah, is that? Uh, da, 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 da. Mm. Okay, uh, let me check that. Okay, this one. I'll copy that. I'll make, uh, I'll change that. Copy. Okay, uh, I will connect to Roach3 and uh, the host itself. So Roach3 and 9.4.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
uh, whenever you do a change on uh, one node, one place, all the other places get the uh, uh, all the other places get the uh, um, the uh, updates as well. So we don't have to worry about syncing the databases and everything. The uh, the application itself, the th three uh, clusters itself act as a one single database. So right now, what we are doing in here is uh, having all those three within the single or the same machine. So um, it, it is for demonstration purposes, but in production, most of the time, these three machines will be connected via a network, will be different. Uh, Will be in three different. Uh, will be in three different uh, uh, locations, three different uh, nodes, uh, physical machines. So, either one of these machines get damaged or get uh, some uh, uh, some trouble. Others two can fill in and they they can uh, start work without an issue. So, if I have. Um, another instance uh, another instance uh, coming in and it will also have these data uh, without an issue so i don't have to uh, work uh, on my own to backing up the old the old other data and everything as soon as another node connects to this it will be automatically synced everything that we that we have saved so far will be uh, updated in the latest uh, a node that we have added. So you guys can see um, in cluster computing, uh, when, when we are working at the cluster, the, the nodes uh, act as a one single machine. Uh, so let's move on uh, with uh, some uh, other things. Uh, Crutch, uh, we'll see some more actions. Uh, we will... Uh, Okay, let's go around with the uh, multi node cluster. Okay, I was checking with I mean the same thing. Uh, right, cluster has initialized. Uh, we have done that and we will run um, we will run some workloads and see how it goes uh, come with uh, so in cockroach db you will find with number of built in workloads uh, to simulate the graphic client to run the workload base cockroach db simply we will start in uh, morv so that means uh, there are some utility functions this is something unique to cockroach uh, but uh, we can see the cockroach word command is not supposed to connect uh, in secure flex like cockroach commands. Instead, you must connect the string end of the command. So what we will do is we will initialize uh, traffic and see um, how it goes. Okay, so uh, we will uh, we will like simulate the database uh, and see uh, whether this. Uh, whether this one is working uh, as expected uh, for uh, for um, uh, you know the worst use cases like whether this machine can handle whether this uh, cluster will sustain uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, like uh, uh, for the uh, 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 what do you call it? for production uh, base? We can check whether these uh, data set will be working uh, in um, in uh, in more suitable way. So what we have to do is we will do uh, we'll go to Roach one, and we will use the uh, cockroach command and workload and initialize this. And uh, the MOVR is like containing a lot of data, and we will say. Uh, we will uh, connect to the Roach one and uh, SSL mode is disabled. So it, we are 
uh, initializing a data set to this. So that means we are simulating the data. Um, let's see. And first we will get rid of the um, rid of the uh, all the three nodes that we are connected. At least uh, two and three are here. Let's uh, disconnect from one. And you guys can see um, we have successfully loaded uh, a data load. So imported uh, promo code stable, user promo code, rights, users, vehicle location history. So it contain thousand rows and vehicle table um, as uh, this amount of uh, data. So um, we we uh, we created a simple workload. So importing of six tables, and uh, we created a simple workload that we can uh, execute. So um, let's see uh, let's see how we can run that. Okay, load the initial data set and run the workload for five minutes that means we are giving um, we are uh, running this for five minutes rather than running uh, one single time so we, we we are testing thoroughly whether this is working so rather than going five minutes we'll just run it for one minute otherwise we'll be wasting a little bit of time in here probably my machine would not endure that much as well so I'll manipulate the command and I will say uh, workload, run the MOVR duration with one minute and execute this, uh, this amount of time. So you guys can see it is running uh, the server um, for five minutes and it is, it is like simulating a real world scenario and see whether our application is um, ready. Uh, our application is making good progress uh, when we are, or oh, our cluster is, cluster can handle things uh, as it's supposed to do. So while this was running, I will go to uh, uh, third one, yes. Uh, I will say show databases. And you guys can see um, the bank one is what we have already created. Now we have MOVR, which is the um, uh, table that we have created for the uh, uh, for the workload and things. So I will uh, use that and show tables. tables. So we should have pretty much uh, every table that we have run. So estimated count uh, is uh, amount, this amount and vehicle, we have uh, uh, this amount of codes and everything. So we have the uh, promo codes, rights and everything uh, synced up. You guys can remember, uh, we execute everything in in the, uh, in the, uh, what do you call the, uh, uh, approach one database even though we uh, put everything there we are getting all this information in uh, the other cluster as well and since it was uh, since it was um, used in the uh, clustering setup so I can say select uh, all from public uh, I need to say the um, rights so I can see all the information uh, that is executed. These are like random information, but at least uh, our uh, in here, we have 874 rows. That is the amount of rows that we have generated. So let me run uh, the simulation, the workload once again, and it is right, writing back. And rather than selecting all, I will select uh, count. Okay, now you guys can see it is 909, 939, 970, 78, 82. So as long as this workload is going on, the rights uh, will get, get along. That means we are 
we are syncing, we are inserting one place and we are getting that same information in another place as well. So you guys can see um, the simulation via workload, we are manipulating the workload and instantly it is available within the cluster. So having such a cluster in our application, uh, we, we have uh, multiple uh, advantages. So we don't have to manually uh, look into these things and you don't have to look uh, anything other than uh, other than that. So uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you guys can see that it is uh, running and everything is working as expected. So um, there are nice uh, tools uh, we, we can use. Uh, so uh, if I go to uh, localhost uh, 8080, okay? So localhost 8080 is the place um, where my um, informations are there. So if you guys can remember, uh, when we create uh, the first cluster, the first cluster has these information, um, uh, uh, the HTTP server, if you guys can remember, let me go once again to remind you on that. Yes, this HTTP address, which will expose us a nice UI uh, console per se um to look at what are the things we have within our cluster so we have the cluster id and we have the capacity number of nodes uh, replications so uh, how many replications are happening and uh, what are the nodes available you can see these are the roach uh, one three and two and how many replicas uh, the capacity what they have in memory usage CPUs and version and everything. So if even we can go to logs and see what's going on in here. Um, what are the information uh, these, these things have and the metrics in our sense, uh, what are, you can, you can see the, uh, we have uh, executed some commands, especially the workload. So past 10 minutes, what we have done so far. So you guys can see what's going on in our cluster and what are the databases right now. Right now we have only the uh, MVR and the bank database. So you can see those things as well. So if you go to bank and the account, the one that we have created. So uh, size, replicas, uh, range and everything uh, that we have seen. So it's not gonna show like uh, all the information regarding that, but at least it, it gives us a nice overview of our database that we are having. So in VR, we have, we don't see the data in here, but at least we have the uh, uh, table definition and everything. So uh, these were created by the workload command that we have created right now. It is just showing us um, where we are at this uh, database. So it shows us a little bit information and SQL activities. Um, so if you have uh, statements, transaction happening, we can see all those things, how many sessions are in place. So uh, what are the uh, information that we ex extracted? Yes, uh, you can have insights and the, um, uh, the uh, more, more details version. Uh, network related stuff, okay? A lot of um, uh, uh, monitoring aspects, I would say, monitoring aspects of everything. So you get an basic idea uh, what these things are. And uh, if there are any uh, jobs happening and everything uh, with related to things or database logs and anything that is, um, that is related to uh, the cluster you can find this here uh, these are like um, debugs and everything we, we normally don't need to go as developers but if you want to help the project you can go debug and see it. 
So overall, you guys can see the node status is here and capacity is uh, in here. So uh, for fun, what we'll do is uh, we will run the uh, execution one more time, uh, the work workload. So um, uh, if we if we if you see the matrix, it should populate uh, the workload that we are doing right now. It it might take some uh, time to update in the UI, but at least it. It is showing that, okay, you can see that we have started the execution process. Now the data is coming in and those those are populating in. So we know that something is going on in our database. And for the overview, we, we are getting the uh, uh, things and how many replicas happening um, and so on and so forth. So if you go to SQL activities, we, uh, sorry, uh, if you go to, yes, we, we have seen the metrics and everything. Um, so everything is uh, live on each and every uh, database we can see. Um, and since this is a cluster, we, we consider these things as a one single node. Um, so if I go to uh, Roach 2 or 3, uh, you guys can see how, uh, what are the, uh, things going under replicas and what are the things uh, that is uh, happening in the same area. Um, so yeah, um, uh, you can have an idea about uh, your cluster uh, by using these uh, informations, but it, it, is, um, it, is, uh, it is making our life easier uh, when, we, when we use uh, such clustering tools and how they react with each other and showing those things in a nice UI. So that's, that makes um, a little bit easy. The main point that we, that we need to take uh, out of this uh, section is that uh, how a cluster works, what are the key components? You have seen the nodes, you have seen the synchronization and how those synchronization should happen especially uh, how initialization should happen uh, when we are initializing the uh, application uh, you you guys can see um, um, you guys can see that uh, uh, first we need to uh, uh, make the setup works uh, setup works in the sense we we need to uh, have the uh, information you know, ready uh, that means um, We'll uh, we'll have to uh, if I go back to the tutorial, uh, the address is address, the listener address, SQL address, especially the advertise address and the listener address are like the places where you emit events when the um, when you want to uh, work with the cluster. So initially, uh, we we would uh, say okay when we uh, uh, when we want to uh, communicate within the cluster, you have to advertise, okay, these are the things that I am be, I'll be providing to the cluster. And the reason address is whenever something comes into my uh, attention, this is the address that we, we are supposed to get. So bear in mind, uh, we are not gonna uh, create a cluster of our own, but we when we look at our, uh, Look at uh, these approaches, how the cluster is made up of, what are the key components that you will see in this, uh, in this section. Have an idea um, uh, how you can uh, design your own cluster if you have to, but um, it is out of our scope to create uh, such a program. But we know the basics of it and we know how we can create a cluster uh, if we have to do in a such a way. And um, of course, uh, there are a few pitfalls and uh, uh, disadvantages if you are taking into a cluster. Uh, that is to be said, um, the more clusters we have, the more redundant the data will be. Okay, the, the redundancy is there. We, we, uh, we can't avoid the redundancy if you have uh, three nodes, all those nodes will have the same data, right? But that is good uh, unless we lost everything, okay? 
rather than uh, uh, rather than losing everything, uh, at least we have a backup. Okay, and within that backup, uh, we will have all the information uh, we need. Okay, so make sure that uh, that we have this information with us, and uh, once this information is there, uh, um, uh, it's uh, it's a cost that we need to bear. Why? Uh, if if you need all the availability, and we also need the uh, data um, data security. Of course, the redundancy is only way. It, it 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 is not something free. It is not something uh, uh, that we can avoid. If you need data security and if you need uh, some uh, way of backupping it, you need to pay for it. Okay, that's why we, we at least we have three nodes in here. Uh, so either one of goes down, other two can help you. Okay. Uh, so in in this scenario, uh, uh, in this scenario, uh, we do not have automatic uh, backup uh, restoration process. For some reason, let's say for instance, uh, Roch uh, one is going down. Okay, in that scenario, what should happen? Uh, probably, uh, we 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 need to have something like. Uh, um, uh, restart policy or a Kubernetes deployer. That is something uh, we'll discuss later on. Where uh, we will have um, a separate watcher, a separate uh, uh, separate program uh, to watch. Okay, this instance is going down. This instance is not uh, performing as expected. There's a network issue. So we should spin up a new one. That's kind of things we will be discussed later on. Um, so that is like a container orchestration. We took the things into uh, control orchestration. Uh, we, we looked at container creation and management. Uh, we will look uh, um, we we'll look in the container uh, orchestration later on. So right now, you, know, you guys can see we are in uh, we are in the early stages of this. Uh, have a look around this. And by the way, uh, you, since this is a Roch 1 instance, you can go to Roch 2 instance as well. So localhost 881. So this is going to show us uh, uh, the console in perspective of Roch 2. It's going to be the same, uh, but uh, we are looking at in a different, uh, different uh, view. So uh, why we have different uh, views on each and everything, so that we know that, ah, okay, the application can be achieved, the um, cluster is running on either one of these, so it should work on 8082 as well. So we have the same uh, Cockroach DB running in there as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the basic um, of the clustering and uh, how cluster should uh, uh, how a cluster should behave and how to set up a cluster in uh, in your uh, this is only a database cluster and you can create a um, cluster of your own for your own job but it's um, it is um, um, it, it is uh, depending on your requirement probably creating a cluster uh, clustering software is not uh, that much easy because we need to think a lot of things uh, especially uh, what uh, what is the synchronization mechanism that we have to do so uh, let's say we get a data we get uh, one data uh, to our cluster and we need to insert uh, we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to make sure the cluster is synchronized. Okay, whenever we are inserting the cluster information, uh, one should update another. So how should how should that happen? So if a new cluster comes in, if a new cluster comes in, what are the data we should uh, we should uh, provide to that cluster? And uh, how are we gonna know that this cluster is gonna be is identical to the other ones? Okay, so cloning uh, those things. And whenever we uh, we get a new member, or when a new uh, uh, or a member goes off, what should happen? Okay, so so we should know about uh, 
uh, informing informing these uh, other uh, other um, nodes. Okay, uh, cluster has joined. A node has joined. A node has disconnected. This kind of information we should have within us. So that is uh, that is something to think. That is something that uh, a developer should be more concerned about. So. All those things, um, make sure you you guys have the uh, understanding of it, otherwise it won't work. Um, and uh, uh, what should be the backup processes? How are we gonna do backups and restoration? How are we gonna manage storage and everything? So there are a lot of aspects uh, when it is coming to uh, developing a cluster on your own but it's uh, certainly going to help uh, you guys to get an idea okay um, so the next thing that I will do is uh, since I am done with uh, my uh, clusters I would just uh, disconnect from all the uh, uh, all the instances right what I am having so I will uh, I, I'll and clear and see what are the processes that I am running. So currently I have like three nodes running. So what uh, I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm not gonna be using these things anymore. So I'm gonna use uh, one more Docker command to uh, stop all these things. Since these are in daemon mode, I'll use the docker stop command uh, with 300 uh, uh, time intervals between each other. So I will stop Roch1, Roch2, and Roch3. I can give the, uh, these are like the container names I have given. Uh, these container names I can give uh, with a space. So it will be stopped uh, one by one, one after another. So it's gonna stop Roch1, Roch2, and Roch3 uh, accordingly. So whenever this is happening uh, under the hood, uh, the cluster is getting uh, information, uh, what is going on and what are the things it's gonna stop. And uh, probably you guys can see the cluster uh, almost stopped working. And um, uh, the stop will, uh, uh, will uh, give us uh, the, give the uh, containers a kill command, we, we, sorry, kill signal. That means uh, we are saying uh, uh, using kill signal, stop uh, each and every the, uh, each and every containers that we are having. Uh, okay. Um, so we can, I think we can just stop it without time delay, terminate. So we are terminating uh, one, two, and three. Let's see Docker PS. Uh, yes, still Rosh2 is trying to stop itself. Okay, now everything uh, has stopped. Yep. Uh, and if I say Docker PS, now you guys can see everything is uh, not working. Uh, give some time to a graceful shutdowns. Okay, I mean, uh, setting up the cluster and sitting down. There are certain things that we should do. We should, uh, we should uh, say the others, uh, 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 others will need some time to shut down. So probably it will take like, uh, depending on your data load, whatever you're doing, it's, it will take a little bit of time, like five to 10 minutes to uh, terminate such a node, it is not easy because as I mentioned earlier, we need to think about the synchronization. We don't need any data corruption to happen. So we are, if you are terminating, we are stopping a cluster, we should give it its time to terminate itself uh, to make the graceful shutdown. But right now, uh, I am not gonna use these containers uh, ever again. So I will remove this. Uh, things, uh, remove these containers. So basically I will use the rm command. rm command stands for removing containers. So I have created three containers and I will remove these three containers. So I have, uh, I, I don't, I won't be having those things in here. So if I say docker ps uh, minus a, even there I won't see the 
proxy instances that I have created uh, right now. And uh, images are removed. And since I am no longer needing the volumes as well, I will use the volume RM command. Okay, Docker volume RM. And I will remove those three volumes. And probably I would not need that network I have created. I will remove that as well. Okay. So we, we created the cluster, we created a node and everything, we ran it. And once we are done, we are removing that. So that is the beauty of uh, one of the things with Docker. We can experiment everything. And once we are done, uh, there is no trace of it. Uh, there, are, uh, the, there are no system files, everything is within the container. Once the container is removed, nothing is there. So it's uh, rather than installing multiple version of ProfessionalDB and you know, finding uh, running those things, uh, we'll leave our system files everywhere in the base operating system. Nothing happens. Uh, all we all we have to do is once we are done, we remove the Docker containers, remove the volumes, and we are back where we start. Even if you like, uh, you can. Uh, so we have the images okay so for some reason if you don't need this image as well uh, so i can say docker rm rm for removing containers if you want to remove an image you have to say rmi and the image name and it will be removed as well so i'm going to keep it uh, for now and if you really don't want the image as well you can use the rmi command to remove the image as well so there you go so uh, you got to know the basic of Docker, basic of clustering, and what are the pitfalls, what are the uh, things that you need to remember. And we have demonstrated a simple cluster using ProcrossDB. Mm. So uh, remember the basics uh, that we have talked, uh, remember the things uh, that we need in order to create a cluster. Okay, anything uh, that you guys need to uh, know? On, on record. Any questions up until this? Okay. Let me stop sharing and stop recording.